Chair, now I recognize Mr. Jordan for five minutes. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Resnick, do, in your testimony, your written testimony, you stress that uh, public health emergency authority is essential um, and the power of public health officials, state and local public health officials in, in making decisions. Um, should there be limits on the emergency powers of public health officials? Um, yes, as I said in my test, oh, thank you for the question, uh, Congressman. Uh, as I said in my testimony, yes, there should absolutely be checks and balances um, and thinking these things through. Um, Tell me what those checks and balances should be. Um, well, actually, Lori, uh, Lawrence Gostin, a law professor of global health at Georgetown University, has um, some criteria that he thinks can think about for individual rights. And is there scientific evidence that um, that it's a, a the policy makes sense? Is the in intervention the least restrictive possible to achieve our public health goal? Are the measures used likely to gain the public support and confidence? Does the person have access to due process to challenge the intervention? And is it is the measure arbitrary or discriminatory? Th those don't sound like checks and balances. Those, those sound like guidelines and just good common sense. Uh, checks and balances means someone else has power, some other authority has power to actually check and balance the decision made by the public health official. What should those checks and balances be? Well, again, I think keeping these guidelines in mind, and you're right, these aren't checks and balances, they're guidelines. But um, thinking that through carefully before you even propose the intervention, and then obviously thinking, having to balance those, those risks. And again, yes, the public health official shouldn't make the decision. Public in. health official makes an emergency decision, emergency authority, and says, this is going to happen. What should be the, what should be the, should there be a time limit on that? So those are good questions, but you know, when we think about the illness and the situation that we're facing, right? So if you have smallpox, you have a, some kind of very contagious disease, there should immediately be able to put that into place. Yes. But what, 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 so you're, you're, are you agreeing with me there should be a time limit? No, I think it depends on the circumstances. I don't think there could be a set, one set moment that there's well, Let's a back up line. a second. Who should be able to check the decision of the public health official? So you have the local boards of health. You have the, the elected officials. Well, now we're talking. Yeah, it seems to me it should be the elected officials, right? That's how our system works. People who put their names on the ballot should make decisions for the people they represent, not someone who's unelected. So the check should come from the elected body. And I'm asking, what, what would be, for, for example, in the state of Ohio, I know what our legislature did. They said the public health order from the governor's office, from the uh, state health director, there should be a time limit on how long that is in effect before the legislature, limited amount of time they can take that decision, but at some point the legislature gets to weigh in and say whether that's appropriate or not. Do you agree with that? So again, I think it depends on the circumstances, right? So again, if you have a, a very contagious disease, no, I do not. So, but if it's a longer term thing, You don't yes. think the elected officials should be able to overrule at some point the length of time of a public health, uh, uh, a public health decision emergency authority? A public health emergency authority decision, I should say. You don't think the elected officials should be able to overrule that? At some point, maybe. But I'm saying in an immediate maybe? emergency. In an immediate emergency where you have life and death. I'm not arguing with that. I'm saying at some point, to your point, at some point, you, you, it seems to me at some point, of course the elected officials can overrule that. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. But I guess the question is at what time point? And when that would be. And yeah. And again, I think that would depend on the circumstances that you're facing, and there would be. I think, questions that, I think that depends on the decision the elected officials make, not the unelected official. But would you think that you'd need public health guidance and information and knowledge to inform those decisions? We, get, we take guidance and that's why we have hearings. We take testimony from people. That's why you're here today. We're getting information, of course. That's always part of the process. But in the end, you don't get to decide. The public health official doesn't get to decide. The people whose names are on the ballot elected to the state legislature, they get to decide. That's how it works in our system. Public health officials ever been wrong? State and local public health officials ever been wrong on, on orders they do? I don't know for sure. I'm sure there's been cases, yes. How about the recent one in New York? The state and local public health officials who said we should put COVID positive patients back into nursing homes. Seems like that was probably wrong. Been nice maybe if the legislature got to weigh in on that and change that decision, people's lives might have been saved. We've got all kinds of examples where that's wrong. Of course we need the check and balance of the elected officials to make these decisions. You agree? I also think there's emergency situations where they would have to act in immediacy. No one disagrees with that. That's why, that's why the legislature gave them emergency authority for a limited amount of time. 
But at some point, the elected officials get to weigh in. I see I'm out of time. I yield back. Thank you, gentlemen, for yielding back. The chair now recognizes Mr. Foster for five minutes. Uh, thank you. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us here at Golden State Times. If you're new to the channel, we encourage you to subscribe by clicking that middle button. Also, check out our previous video by clicking the video on the right or a video you might enjoy by clicking the video on the left. Also, don't forget to click the thumbs up button and share this video on social media. Peace.